Well, it's that time again to call out Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg. What are we calling out Alvin Bragg for this time? Well, I'm sure you've seen the video, and I'm sure that you have been well aware of it by now. But, the infamous subway brawl. Yep, we all know about this. We all know about this. That happened to Harlem over the weekend. And when I found out that the teen who assaulted the cop is not going to get charged as an adult. And because Eric Adams doesn't believe... Well, not Eric Adams. No, he's actually upset about this. But because now you got Alvin Bragg who doesn't want the teen charged as an adult. This has become a more complicated issue. I, I mean, really. Really. The teen should be charged as an adult. You know? But no. I'm not a bird. You don't really teach the teen as an adult. No. You don't believe in it. Okay, so let's read what happened. So this is what we know on Saturday. So this happened at the 125th Street, Lexington Avenue Station, East Harlem, which is... Not a good area to be in in the first place. Um, police initially from Transit District 1 approached two teens, a boy and a girl, about skipping on their subway fare. The cops told the pair to leave the subway station, which is when the teenage boy started getting aggressive. The video then shows the officer and the teenager fighting when the officer holds handcuffs before the teenager starts throwing punch after punch at the officer's head. The officer fights back before the younger man slams him into a subway gate and then places him into a chalk cold on the station floor. But the man who recorded the video said the officer was the one who got physical first. So, again, it, it just doesn't make any sense that the... First of all, you're not supposed to use Section 35 against the cop, okay? So if these teens knew about our Section 35 self-defense laws, then you would know... <sighs> I don't know what else there to say right now. And look at this. The teen was arrested for a loaded handgun. So there you go. And look at this. The two teens were arrested and charged on Saturday. And of course, they were released a day after. I mean, really? <sighs> this is bail reform in a nut job. This teenager who assaulted the police officer... Should have been at Rikers in Juvenile Hall. But no, we're not going to do that. So look at this. Moynihan also blames the raise the age legislation. No, 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 no. A district attorney can easily raise the charges and charge the teen as an adult. But no, the teen's not going to be charged as an adult. The teen's going to be taken to family court. And you know what's going to happen. The teen's going to be let out. Again, I, I, I mean, this state is so backwards. And here we go again with this guy right here who shouldn't even be a district attorney right now. This guy, Alvin Bragg, needs to go. I've been saying this for a while, right? Oh, we're, you, you think we're going to forgive you because... You let Jose Alba free? No, bud. You're still on the hook for what you're doing. And you need to go. And if you don't go, then maybe Lee Zeldin will fire you in January. B because you gotta go. And Crime Wave Cafe, don't give us any excuses. Oh, this is not a governor's place to do this. Uh, yeah, it's your job, governor. If this guy refuses to upheld the law... He needs to go. And Melinda Katz needs to go for using the NYPD as private security. That's a whole different story from when she was moving into her home in Forest Hills. But, yeah, so we got two DAs that need to leave their jobs. And right now, I, I just don't know anymore. So we got to get to the other crime that happened in, Brooke, in Manhattan and in, uh, yeah, we're going to get into it. So... What was I going to look for first? Is this the same story? 
Actually, no, 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 no. Eric Adams is, is actually upset. That's what I wanted to read first. So, just going to see here. So, apparently, Eric Adams believes that catch and release should be bye-bye. And I'm in agreement. Catch and release should be bye-bye. No more catch and release. None. This has to stop. And then we have a statement from the PBA, Pat Lynch. If New Yorkers want to know why the chaos in the transit system is not improving more quickly, this is why. Of course, two teens assault a police officer in Harlem. The criminals underground know they can get in a brawl, choke a cop, and be back out in hours. So, and then I'll read what else, what, um, what Pat Lynch said on Twitter. Let's see if we can pull this up. You should be able to. Because I, I gotta read you what Pat Lynch said. Because, and we're not gonna play the video again. We're not gonna play the video again. Mm -mm. So this is the other statement that Pat Lynch said. End quote. Cops are putting ourselves on the line to make the subway safer, but we are feeling abandoned by a justice system that won't back us up. And again, you know, Pat Lynch makes a good point. It's bail reform that basically messed up law enforcement. And, y you know, Bruce Blankman can be all talk in Nassau County. He can say that we're going to go after people, but no, we're not getting any help from Albany right now. We're not getting any help. And until, maybe, and I'm not saying it's going to happen, but maybe, just maybe, if Lee Zeldin somehow, some way becomes governor, which, my whole miracles, let's hope that happens. This bail reform has got to go in January too. Because there's going to be two big changes, actually no, three big changes happening in January. You know what the third change is going to be? Major shakeup of the MTA, and that's another video we're gonna we're gonna maybe do that in the fall if if Selden does win, because I, I don't feel like talking about that today. Not with not with all the crime going on. Okay, so let's get into the other subway crimes going on. Let's see if we can go here. Let's see if this is the same station. Park Place, right? Let me make sure this is the same one. Yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll not read the AM New York one. We'll read the uh, Channel 4 one. So here we go. Off-duty NYPD officer was shoved to the subway tracks in Manhattan in an apparently unprovoked attack ahead of Monday afternoon's rush. So it says here that the 40-year-old cop was blindsided by the come-from-behind stranger shove as he waited on the northbound 2-3 train platform shortly before 4 p.m. on Monday, July 25th. The victim fell to the platform floor and managed not to fall forward into the path of an oncoming train as it pulled into the station. The suspect got on the train and allegedly yelled profanity at the victim as the subway train pulled out. Police released surveillance footage that they say shows him hopping a turnstile illegally just before the incident. The officer had some minor leg injuries and refused medical attention. So let's see if we can get a good look at the suspect. Yes, Crime Stoppers does have a good look at him. Ooh, yeah, that's definitely a weapon. They definitely got a good look. Okay, so let's get you a suspect description. The suspect was last seen... Oh, come on, let's go quick. The suspect was last seen wearing a bandana on his head. Black suspect, possibly around six feet tall, last seen wearing a black shirt. Can we see what type of shoes he was wearing? Let's see if we can replay the video. Ah, come on. Okay, there we go. There we go. So, he was also last seen wearing black pants and red and black sneakers. So, again, in these stories, you're supposed to give a suspect description. How do you not give a suspect description? My goodness. Okay. Now we're going to get to some other stuff in Queens that does need to be 
disgust. So, just making sure we are good here. Two men sought in field robbery attempt on board a Rockaway Park subway train. An alert motorman broke up an attempted robbery on board a Rockaway shuttle train last week, according to Transit District 23. Police also from the 100 precinct are looking for two men who approached a 42-year-old woman who was on board the Rockaway Park shuttle just before 5 a.m. on Monday, July 18th. The men demanded the victim hand over her purse and took it off, but got spooked by the inquisitive motorman and threw the purse under a seat and took off in another car. Hmm. The bag was recovered and the woman was not injured during the failed robbery and the two men were last seen walking on Rockaway Beach Boulevard according to authorities. So... According to Crime Stoppers, they had dark complexions and one wore a gray hooded sweatshirt with red lettering, white pants and dark sneakers. The other suspect wore a dark hooded sweatshirt with white details, dark pants and dark shoes. So, Then, look what happened on the Flushing IRT. A teenager was slugged at Woodside. So let's read this. Police from the 108th Precinct and Transit District 20 are looking for a suspect who engaged in a verbal dispute with a 13-year-old boy uh, just inside the 61st Street, Woodside 7 train station above Roosevelt Avenue just after 4 p.m. So this happened last Wednesday. Just want to clarify that here because I don't want to give misinformation here. The argument escalated when the man shoved the teen to the ground and then punched him in the face, causing a laceration under his left eye. The suspect fled in an unknown direction. The victim was taken to NYC Health Elmhurst Hospital in stable condition. The NYPD released surveillance image of a suspect who was last seen wearing a yellow tank top with blue lettering and a yellow black pack. Light complexion, so... Mm. Medium complexion, let's do that. So they definitely got a good look at this guy. So, as I said, you got to watch it back in the subway these days. Because if you don't, it, I don't know at this point. I mean, it's like we're fighting a losing battle unless Lee Zeldin's the governor at this point. And speaking of Queens, a jewelry store got robbed in Astoria. So it looks like another job that the 114th has to get involved with. So let's read this. So this happened on Tuesday, July 12th. This was at KA Jewelry Inc. at 30-04 Broadway just before 5 p.m. The woman stepped to the counter and presented a stolen credit card to purchase approximately $7,000 worth of jewelry. While the store employee was running the credit card, one of the men reached beneath the plexiglass protecting the counter and snatched a display tray containing rings worth of approximately $12,000. The NYPD released a surveillance video that shows the heist in progress and several photos that show the three suspects. The woman had dark hair and wore a black and white print summer dress with dark sandals, sunglasses on her hand, blue face mask, blue black bag slung over her shoulder. The man then reached and grabbed the tray, had dark hair and wore sunglasses, a blue face mask, a black short sleeve shirt, black pants, and dark sneakers. So, there we go. I, I mean, look what's going on here. I don't even want to read this last part, but I'm going to. Uh, a four-wheeled scooter. He wore a distinctive white t-shirt with an Avengers comic graphic across the back, beige trousers and white sneakers. He wore a gold baseball cap and sunglasses. So We do have a video of what happened. I, I mean, this is what goes on that we constantly just get ignored. And again... Each time something happens in Astoria, it gets put off. It constantly gets put off. And look at this. They just took the jewelry. Okay, and then this last one. And Channel 7 did bring this up on the air. I can't find it anywhere else for whatever reason, but we'll read this. A woman was killed by a city bike. 
And speaking of City Bike, I found it in a weird coincidence that I saw one in Glen Oaks today, right by the old Gersh Academy building. So, let's read this. A young woman riding a city bank down a quiet Upper East Side Street was fatally struck by a truck Tuesday morning. The 28-year-old was biking east and against traffic along East 85th Street between Madison and Park Avenue at around 10.50 in the morning when she was hit by the tractor trailer. The woman suffered severe head trauma, an NYPD spokesperson said. Medics rushed the woman to Wild Cornell Medical Center, but doctors could not save her life. Man, that, that's really unfortunate. Good news is, this is not a hit-and-run incident. The truck driver did stay at the scene, according to the 1-9 Precinct. The 1-9 Precinct currently has no description of the truck. Video posted to the Citizen app showed what appeared to be a large food distribution truck stopped in the middle of the street, which was cornered off by police tape after the crash. The mostly residential block is also home to Regis High School and Park Avenue Christian Church. And not to mention, this is not too far from where Central Park is. So no surprise there. No surprise. So... Ugh. Really cannot make this stuff up, man. Really can't. And then look at this. East 85th Street is not among the official truck boots the commercial vehicles are supposed to use in New York City. Though nearby, as you guessed it, East 86th Street is a wider street. Yep. And of course, 86th Street is where the M86 bus select bus goes. New York also does not allow 53-foot long tractor trailers, the larger of the two side trailer lengths, to make pickups or delivery within the five boroughs. Do some advocates point out that the rule is often violated? So, yep, this is what goes on. And look how narrow this street is. How was a truck even allowed to go on here? So... All I'm going to say, again, I am not in any mood to talk about Channel 1 today. I am literally not in any mood to talk about them. I am not. No. You know, Alvin Bragg, again, you are held liable for what you are doing. You refuse to upheld the law. And I'm going to keep calling you out whenever you do something wrong. You refuse to charge the teens that assaulted police officers as adults. You get called out for that. You refuse to originally help somebody in a self-defense case and then wait two weeks later to free the person. Guess what, Alvin? You get called out for that too. So the clock is ticking, Alvin Bragg. People are watching what you're doing right now. Don't think I'm going to be quiet about you. Alright, I'm not going to stay silent. Nobody shuts me up. So be careful, Alvin Bragg. Because you're going to be in really big trouble if you keep doing what you're doing right now. So that's it.